Wendy. Karen read you down. And I loved every minute of it. Let's get into last night's episode of Real Housewives of Potomac. Hey, my beautiful souls, welcome back to another episode. I am your host, your girl, Beautiful Soul. And before we get into it, let me welcome all of my many new subscribers to the channel. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you've come across this video and are not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. I would love to have you. Second, your girl, her energy is off today. She is full of anxiety. Her patience is short. Um, Tomorrow is election day. So if you have not participated in early voting, please, please, please make sure you get out tomorrow and let your voice be heard. Remember, your vote is your voice. These um, politicians, they don't hear you any other way. And please do not let anyone tell you that your vote doesn't matter, that your vote doesn't count because it does. Um, There is a difference between um, key battleground states and all of the other states, but your vote counts in every election that that takes place, specifically in your local elections. Your local elections are more important than the presidency itself. I should say all of it is important, but when it comes down to um, politicians that affect your everyday life, those will be your local elections. And going out to cast your vote tomorrow, you will have to vote on things like um, if they want to add taxes, um, a penny tax for whatever reason, for sales tax, let's just say. If um, they want to make changes to what's happening with your school system, um, you'll find that on the ballot. Uh, Whoever is running to represent you in Washington, that would be your Congress, that's um, your congressman that's in the Senate or in the House, they will be on the ballot tomorrow. Um, And it is your senators, to me, that hold a key important role. We talk about how this current president is running amok. If we had a Senate that would hold him accountable, Senate being um, people like Mitch McConnell, Matt Goetz, um, and all those other people, um, Lisa Murkowski, uh, Susan Collins, uh, Doug What's his name? The coach, the wrestling coach. Y'all know who I'm talking about. If they were to stand up and hold this president accountable, we would not be dealing with all of the chaos that we are dealing with. The reason he can do what it is that he is doing is because they are allowing him to do it. So make sure you get out and you vote tomorrow. You vote for your congressman. And and I myself, I voted blue all down the ticket. You guys know that I am a independent voter, but I cannot deal with Republicans in office right now. They are not living in reality. They are not governing in reality. They are governing based on Trump world. And I can't deal with that. I voted blue all down the ticket. I am asking you to get out and cast your vote. If your vote was not important, if your vote was not powerful, they would not be trying to stop you from voting. They would not be trying to get votes thrown out, get votes not counted. If your vote was not important, they would not be trying to stop you from voting. With that said, y'all, to 
to all of you that are watching the video and are not subscribed. We have conversations like this all the time. We talk about what's going on over in politics. We talk about what's happening socially. We talk about a plethora of things over here. And we have some fun with the celebrity gossip and all of that jazz. So if this is a place you like to be, there's no mess. There's no drama. I don't tolerate a lot of foolishness over here. I don't tolerate anyone disrespecting the host and I won't tolerate anyone dis disrespecting you as a subscriber and a commenter down in my comment section. We can agree to disagree on a lot of things, but we will not agree to disagree on Trump or anyone who supports Trump. And if you come at me because I choose not to support someone that is supporting Trump, you might find yourself blocked. That is the only, only arena where I don't have a lot of tolerance for, and I don't apologize for it. But let's get into last night's Real Housewives of Potomac episode. So the episode starts with Candace. She's over with a good Judy Cliff and, um, you know, they're running the, the scale and, you know, Cliff asks, asks her what it is that, you know, what is her goal as it pertains to, you know, this song that she remixed. She wants to get the remix out. She wants to perform the remix live. And of course, she goes into more tears and and more victimhood. Moving on. We're over with Giselle. She's meeting with Robin and the two of them are going to meet up with Karen. See, I knew that Giselle wasn't sincere in caring about whatever it is she thinks that Karen may be going through as a result of the tax situation that Ray had. Because if Giselle was sincere and was worried about Karen, she would have met Karen one-on-one. -on -one. She wouldn't have bought the other green-eyed devil, right? So the two of them together, I don't know why they would believe that Karen would open up to the two of them if she was feeling any kind of way about um, giving money to Ray to help him um, get out of that tax debt. Right. So, like I said, Robin and Giselle, they meet up with Karen. Somehow, some way, Giselle has forgotten her shoes and she's shown up with her slides. OK, um, we see Karen in uh, the middle in, in the confessionals and Karen is basically saying, um, don't get it twisted. Uh, she says that <laughs> one would have to be delusional to not be prepared for these green eyed bandits. And she's sitting on ready. I knew it. I knew it. You would have to, if you're going to meet with Giselle and you walk in and you see Giselle and Robin within an instant, you need to put on your whole body armor. You need to protect yourself, your personal information. And that's that. Keep it straight surface. And that's exactly what, what Karen did. Karen did. Um, Giselle brought it up. Uh, she basically asked her about the situation and said that Wendy told them that when they were at the lake house that, you know, she was in inhibited <laughs> with the brown liquor. And, uh, you know, she said that she felt, you know, some of the things that she said, they were concerned about her. And if she was basically feeling salty about, you know, sharing her money with Ray to help him out of his tax situation. Um, Karen basically denied it, um, basically said she said no such thing that she wanted her money back. And of course, Bravo rolls the tape. Karen said, you know, she needs her money back. She want her money back. Um, but <laughs> that's what Karen does when she comes. I realize when she comes into one-on-ones with these two, she distracts. She does not admit to anything. She distracts. And I'm understanding the logic behind that now. Um, and then she denies it. And then she distracts from the topic at hand. And she changes the conversation from her and Ray to her and Wendy and what went down at Wendy's um, Black Girls Vote event. And, you know, they had a good chuckle about it. And um, 
they pretty much move on. Robin at that point chimes in and says, you know, she's talking about her embellished um, business that she got, she's got going on. And, you know, on her website, uh, all of the pictures on her website are of her and she wants to switch it up a little. So she wants to invite the ladies to be models for her um, and for the website. And so they, you know, they all think it's, a great idea. And of course, Robin is not going to invite Monique. And that makes Giselle very happy. So Karen then brings up the subject of Robin's taxes. And now Robin can't talk about it. But remember, when Karen's husband, not Karen, her husband, um, when it hit the fan that, you know, Ray owed all this money and back taxes and stuff like that, they tried to confront Karen about Ray's tax issue. And Karen said, you know, she can't talk about it, probably because there was some negotiating going, going on as far as the cost and lawyers were involved. And now Robin understands and says she can't talk about her tax issue. And Karen says, my, 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 my how the tables have turned. But Karen says, you know, I'm not here to ride you about it. You know, I'm just here to offer my support to you in any way. You know, she had, they had their own tax situation. So I'm sure Karen has some insight on what it is that Robin may need to do to get through this. I just say, call up the IRS and, and set up a payment plan. That's, that's just me. We're over at Wendy's house and, you know, she's doing the family thing. She's checking the boys homework and in the confessionals, she's, you know, she's heartbroken. She's hurt that Karen called her ignorant at the black girls vote event. Um, she says she's tired of the constant jabs from Karen and she's telling us that she's not ignorant. And I'm looking at her attempting to present herself as the victim. Wendy, you, you're not a victim. You bogarted your way into the conversation that Karen and Candace was having. That conversation had absolutely nothing to do with you. You tried to bully Karen into siding with you all and Karen stood her ground. Karen was not here for it. Karen says Monique is her friend. Monique is her friend. And you came back and said, you know, we're not telling you not to be friends with her. We're telling you to hold her accountable. And Karen told you, you sound ignorant. Why do you sound ignorant? Because Karen has held Monique accountable. So I agree with Karen. You sound ignorant. And um, yeah, we... <laughs> Girl, you and your four degrees, you are the only one that cares about those four degrees. Really. When it comes to this show, PhD, um, four degrees, and yet here you are, uh, 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 another character on a reality TV show. <sighs> so yeah, Wendy brought up her degrees again. And, and even with all of the, the degrees, she still sounds ignorant to me, still sounds ignorant to me. And some of my, my, um, my peeps down in the comment section, they sick of you. They keep talking about how you keep saying that you're a professor at John Hopkins <laughs> University when truth be told is you're a part-time professor at John Hopkins University. And, and, and furthermore, you still ain't talked about this old Sue curse. This Osu caste system. You still ain't talked about it. But okay, moving on. We're over with Ashley. She's um, back for some one-on-one -on -one counseling. And uh, she admits to the therapist that she believes both her and Michael have been unhappy sexually for some time now. Uh, she says she doesn't feel sexy. Um, she says her body basically is a vessel for Dean, you know? Um, so she doesn't want to be touched by Michael. She doesn't want him to do certain types of things 
to her and she feels bad about it, but she is having a hard time getting past it. So based on, you know, what the doctor is hearing, she starts to do a baseline for Ashley um, as it relates to postpartum depression. They ask you questions about, you know, your current mental faculties or health, you know, um, do you find yourself not as happy as you used to be? Um, are you just, you know, they, they just go down the list with these questions and um, gauge your responses based on that. And we could clearly see that Ashley is still dealing with some serious postpartum depression. She says, um, you know, she's struggling uh, and she feels like she is in a fog. You know, and the doctor lets her know, you know, all of the things that she's talking about um, that has been some of the complaints of some of, of a lot of women who suffer from postpartum depression. Doctor gives her some advice, um, you know, and some homework in how to get back to herself. And one of the, the thoughts are to travel. So Ashley is probably going to be putting together the cash trip this year. We're over with Candice. She arrives at the studio. She's going to be listening to the finished remix with um, Chucky, mm -hmm, the producer. And uh, so she sits down. She's nervous. They play the song. And I like the song. Will I be purchasing the song? No, no, I will not be supporting Candice at all. But I really like the song. I could hear the song being played on radio stations across the country. Um, it's got a nice, smooth beat to it. it it's a, it, She did a good job on the song. And um, so she's real excited. She loves the song. And Chucky, at that moment, um, decides to offer Candice a contract, wants, him, wants her to be a part of of his label. She gets all misty eyed. She pulls out her tissue to dab at um, the inner corners of her eyes. And she tells us the story of when she was younger, um, her and a group of friends had a girl group and they had actually gotten to the point where they received a recording contract. And her mom took the contract to an entertainment lawyer and the entertainment lawyer told her, um, told mom that it was basically a terrible deal. It was a bad deal. So her dreams of being a recording artist never came to fruition. But here she is. She's come for a circle and Chucky is offering her a uh, recording contract. And she asks, she, she says, yes, he pulls out the bottle. They celebrate. And I'm like, Candace, girl, you say yes. You ain't seen no contract. You you ain't seen nothing. Um, I hope. I hope that you take the same steps as your mother took with you years ago. Uh, you let them drop the contract. You have an attorney who represents you. Look over the contract and tell you whether or not this is a good deal. I hope. I hope you didn't just jump on it onto that ship. And I'm not saying that Chucky is a bad business person or anything like that, but no, in any type of deal, you need someone that's going to be looking over these contracts. That's going to, you know, work and serve on your best interest, girl. But congratulations. Moving on. We're over with Monique. They're scrambling. They're trying to get the babies together, get the babies off to school. You know, they got to get them ready, get them um, for have breakfast and stuff like that. And Monique is snapping and picking at everything Chris does. Everything, everything he does. And he's real calm and he's real patient about it. And I'm like, Monique, girl, have you? Have you gone to see someone other than your pastor? Uh, not saying that your pastor is not capable of helping you um, see some things in regards to your behavior and how you got to a certain point. But I think you need to go see a professional therapist and have someone do a baseline on you. Uh, for depression. I don't know if it's postpartum depression 
or depression. But in this scene, in this moment, I saw a lot of myself in Monique. And I ended up at, I told y'all, I, I don't shy away from therapy. There are, there has been been several times over the past few years where I find myself, you know, going to sit down with the therapist to work through certain um, moments in my life where I see it's bringing me down. And I've had these baselines um, performed on me regularly. And there was a moment where I was behaving the same as Monique was behaving in this scene with my son, I nicked picked over everything when it came to him. He could not breathe. And when I realized what I was doing, I set up a therapy appointment and they performed the baseline on me and I was diagnosed with depression. Um, so maybe this is what Karen is talking about when she says that Monique is dealing with something medically. Maybe Karen sees this too. I saw it clearly in this episode. I don't know if it's just plain depression or if it's postpartum depression, but Monique needs to see a professional therapist and have a baseline performed on her. The anger and um, that Monique displayed towards Candace and physically attack Candace could be all a part of this. I told y'all um, during this same time, I was real angry, angry. I ain't supposed to have a job right now, or I ain't supposed to be working where I'm currently working. I should have been fired, fired because I cussed out my bosses. So Monique, girl, get you some therapy. And and I ain't no professional. I just know what I've been through. I know what I've had to see within myself. And what I've seen within myself, I'm seeing within Monique. Get you some professional therapy. Have someone perform a baseline on yourself. Be true to yourself. This happy-go-lucky um, personality that you try to portray as if everything is a okay with you and the family. No, we seeing the truth come out in other ways. That nitpicking, I was like, Ooh, girl, Chris got the patience of Joe. He could not do anything. He left the door open to the dishwasher. She picked at that. Um, uh, she picked at how Chris did, um, her son's hair. I was like, girl, we're over with Giselle and her house. Work is still happening on her house. She's um, working on the garage now. Ashley arrives with Dean. Uh, they go in the house. Uh, she lets Giselle know about her therapy appointment and some of the things that she has learned about herself. She whips out her boobs so she can breastfeed Dean. And she talks with Giselle about, you know, wanting to go on a trip. You know, that was one of the suggestions of the therapist for her to go on a trip to, you know, do some things, be around her friends and, and try to get back to who she was prior to Dean. So um, she wants to invite everyone. She lets Giselle know she wants to invite everyone, including Monique. And Giselle, of course, talks her out of it. If Monique goes, then she won't be there. And then, you know, everybody else probably would be put on the spot and be uncomfortable. And, um, you know, Ashley clearly has decided that she hasn't thought this all the way through that uh, she will think on it you know, some more. So we're over with Robin at the photo shoot. Giselle and Robin are the first to arrive. Um, Wendy arrives and, you know, as they're preparing for the photo shoot, um, they let Wendy know some, some of the things that Karen had to say about her. And of course, Giselle lies and adds on to what really went down. And at that moment, you know, she wants to know if Karen is going to be a part of the photo shoot. And she decides that she's going to have a conversation with Karen. <laughs> the rest of the ladies arrive 
and you know everybody's picking out their hat and Candace and, and Wendy are sitting off to the side and of course Wendy is baby and Candace how are you doing and Candace you know it's really weird because Karen really is very supportive of me we know that she supports you and she supports uh, Monique and she won wanted you to know that you're not entirely innocent in this situation your mouth is what got it here girl <laughs> so the photo shoot begins um Ashley you know pulls out the flag of Portugal announces that they're going to take a trip to Portugal and that Monique will not be coming she has decided that not only will the other ladies be uncomfortable but Monique very well may be uncomfortable with being around the other ladies being where they are at this moment so Wendy decides you know this is great this is fantastic um but before we head on how to head out on this trip you know I think we should all clear the air and I need to clear the air with Karen Karen chuckles because she knows <laughs> because she knows that Wendy of course is, is is coming for her I'm telling you I said it from the beginning that Karen has been purposely doing things to get under um, Wendy's skin, especially when it comes to these degrees. I still stand by that. I said it um, earlier in the season. I still stand by that. And she knew, she knew when she changed that subject, when she was having tea with Giselle and Robin, and she talked about Wendy, she knew that Giselle was going to go back and tell Wendy and add on to the story. You can't tell me Karen did not know that. And so, like I said, Karen chuckles as Wendy announced that she needs to clear the air with her. She lets Karen know that she has four degrees and you don't have one. And um, I have four. And um, she drops this bombshells and says, I'm not one to brag on my degrees. So Wendy, you are a liar, girl, because Bravo rolled the tape and they only counted three times, three separate times on when you've bragged about your degrees, girl. Every opportunity you have in the confessionals, you've been bragging about your degrees. And I could care less about your degrees. Karen went to tell her the difference about book smarts and common sense. And, and Karen says, I have common sense and my common sense have gotten me thus far. She is a um, entrepreneur and uh, yeah, she's not a failure. Just because you have four degrees doesn't mean she is a failure because she doesn't have one degree. And that's basically what Karen was telling her. But Karen reads Wendy down, down. Me personally, I would much rather have my common sense because when it comes down to true scratching and surviving, common sense will get you there, get you over each and every time. Um, and listening to this whole scene and and that's all she has. That's all Wendy has. She feels her four degrees is what makes her a whole person. And they do not. Just because you have four degrees, that does not automatically give you respect. You earn respect. You earn respect and you completely turned a whole group of people off who watch this show when you started bragging about your degrees. Like I said, you got all of these degrees, but you find yourself here on Real Housewives of Potomac. And, you know, it's no shabby. It's no shabby accomplishment to be, you know, a real housewife. It's not a shabby accomplishment. But at the same time, Karen, who has no, for, no, no degrees, has found herself with the same accomplishment, Wendy. Girl, please have several seats. Your degrees does not auto automatically gain you respect. We get this message. Two days later, the news has hit all of the blogs that Monique 
is countersuing Candace. And all you hear Candace saying, that rusty ass bitch. <laughs> I was tickled. I was like, oh, so, so Candace got the news that Monique has countersued and she's dogging Monique out. Hood rat this. All of her friends are hood rats talking shit about Monique's lawyer. And she was, it was full of vitriol and hate. And I was like, there it is. All season long, Candace has tried to portray herself as someone who she is not. But welcome back, Candace. Uh-huh. I see you, girl. This is the Candace that I know. This is the Candace that I see out on social media. This is the mean and hateful Candace that I know and see over on social media. Welcome back, girl. Yeah, I expect Candace to be upset because you thought you <laughs> you thought you were going to win, girl. You thought Monique was just going to lie down and let you portray yourself as the victim when clearly you are not. She was talking. She was saying she's listening to her stupid lawyer. No. Yeah. Mon that's why Monique pays her lawyer. She's going to pay her lawyer to give her legal advice and she's going to follow that legal advice because I guarantee you um, Monique has provided her attorney with uh, visuals of what went down at the barn. <laughs> And her attorney said, oh, no, you may you may have been in the wrong, but she ain't completely in the right legally. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to counter sue. Candace is furious. Welcome back, Candace. I knew it was all a facade. I knew it. Um, she was <laughs> she was real mad and and and. Chris is there, of course, to hold her down, trying to calm her down. She's saying some of the mean and nasty, hateful things. And like I said, she's upset. I expect it, right? But I didn't expect it to be laced with such hatred and vitriol because she's been portraying herself as this better than person all season, right? <laughs> Like I said, Chris tries to tries to calm her down. Um, just know what she said. He tells her, just know what you did. Be fine with it and let it play itself out. Now we know it's played itself out. We know it's gone before a judge, and we know the judge has thrown Candace's charges out and um has thrown Monique's countersuit charges out. <laughs> And that's the end of the episode, y'all. That's all I got. Thank you for tuning in. I won't be in tomorrow. For those of you who um, follow me do, um, through the lives, I won't be on tomorrow. I told y'all from the beginning of this, this uh, recap and review that my anxiety is really high. My patience is very short. My, my block finger, my block button. I've been pushing, pushing, pushing. And I'm really sad because um, I had I had to get rid of a longtime supporter of mine. Um, I told y'all when it comes to Donald Trump, I am not agreeing to disagree with jack shit. And if you come over here and try to hold me accountable on based, you know, for my actions in in um, denouncing and choosing not to support these entertainers, these clowns who are in turn supporting Donald Trump. You want to call me vile and want to call me a bully because I choose to not support these entertainers. You got to go. You got to go. Just like you're standing up for their choice to support Donald Trump. I have the choice to not support those who support Trump. I've said that from the very beginning. So yes, I've had to block some people. My, my, my block finger is real itchy. I don't have any patience. 
Not one of these people who are coming over calling me vile and bullying. They ain't over there talking to Donald Trump and calling him vile and calling him a bully. Mm -mm. That's all I got, y'all. So I won't be in tomorrow. I will be coming in. I will be doing a live today. So, um, yeah, just don't be looking for me tomorrow. Again, if you come across this video and are not subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. I have presented to you who I am and I, I don't make any apologies for it. I stand 10 toes down. So if this is the place you want to be, I would love to have you. We have a good time over here for the most part. But when it comes to politics, I have no tolerance. None whatsoever. I, I'm not explaining myself any further. I've said what I said and I will govern myself accordingly. Go accordingly. Now, if you want to try me, that's your choice. But for the most part, we have a good time. You'll see down in the comments, we'll be disagreeing and agreeing when it comes to this whole Candace and Monique situation. That's fine. We can agree to disagree on these types of things. We can agree to disagree when I come in with the celebrity gossip. We can agree to disagree on social commentary. But when it comes to Donald Trump, it's just not happening. Remember, we're in a pandemic while he's going around the country um, Telling people that we're rounding the curve. I have a cousin that passed away a few days ago and I can't go to the funeral because COVID-19, the numbers are escalating. I can't do what we've always done. I can't get together with family. I can't sit and talk with family um, and, and, and laugh about the memories and love on them and hug on them. I can't mourn together with my family. I cannot celebrate the life of my cousin because of this pandemic. But yet Trump is going around the country telling his supporters that we're rounding the curve, encouraging his, his supporters to um, not wear masks, uh, to get in people's faces, to harass people, to intimidate people, all of that. But I'm the vile one because I choose not to support people who support that foolishness. I love y'all. I do. Even if I blocked you, I love you. I just don't want to have any further conversation with you. Be safe. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye. Yes, yes, yes. The Beautiful Souls Boutique is now open. We've got mugs, we've got tote bags, we've got hoodies, and we've got so much more. The boutique is open 24 hours a day for your shopping pleasure. Go on over and check it out. And as always, I thank you for your support.